National Gallery of Arts rolls out post-COVID-19 programs towards promoting Nigeria's arts industry. Plus, agriculture receives a boost with ongoing military operations. Hello and welcome to Panorama. I'm Ian Ray John. Correspondent with the News Agency of Nigeria, Ismaila Shafi, has elaborately revealed how former acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Ibrahim Magu, allegedly masterminded money laundering through a clergy, past clergy pastor, Emmanuel Omali. Abubakar Osman Akwanga has details of the revelation. The News Agency of Nigeria reports that during interrogation of the suspended acting chairman of the EFCC, Mr. Ibrahim Magu, by the Justice Ayo Salami led panel, a copy of the report made available to Nan on Saturday in Abuja identified one Pastor Emmanuel Omale of Hand of God Prophetic Ministry as a chief launderer of the reluted funds. The report states that. Pastor Omali was uncovered through an investigative report on EFCC's activities by the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit and mentioned in the final report of the Presidential Committee on Audit of Recovered Assets. The report established that the unknown clergy is alleged to have bought a landed property on behalf of Margo, worth 573 million naira in Dubai, United Arab Emirates, and also mentioned in several petitions as masterminder of money laundry. As an unknown pastor, the NFIU's report showed huge movement of funds ranging from 573 million, 228,000, 40 naira, and 41 kobo, and indicates efforts had been intensified to expose the real identity of the clergy with a view to arraigning him for trial. On the Ziani Alison Madwiki case, the PCARA report accused Margo of failure to cooperate with authorities in the United Kingdom to facilitate effective prosecution of the case. Nan established that the acting chairman faced to liaise with the UK NCA to charge the former minister to court in the UK. The suspended acting chairman was also indicted by the report by Nan correspondent for deliberately refusing to provide documentary evidence that would allow Office of the Attorney General of the Federation to initiate extradition process which strained EFC's relationship with Europe. Nan reports that Magu is being held at the police headquarters is expected to reappear before the Salami probe panel on Monday against several allegations. Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NT News. In other news, the federal government is addressing the challenge of low power voltage in the country with the construction of more sub stations to boost and provide stable electricity. Minister of Power, Sally Maman, inspected one of these infrastructures in Jigawa State ahead of its inauguration. Joshua Ojito reports. Strategic to the implementation of the power sector recovery program are substations under construction in parts of the country to address low voltage and epileptic electricity supply. Jigawa State is benefiting from this infrastructure which is located in Gagarawa. There are three substations in Jigawa State with these of 2 by 60 MVA, the biggest in the state expected to serve six local government areas. Minister of Power, Saleh Momung, is in Gagarawa in continuation of his tour of power projects to monitor their implementation as he engages the contracting firm on timely delivery. The project is commendable and we have almost reached um, up to 90 or even 100 percent completed electrically. Here we want to improve the voltage that we have not been getting before. And I also want to use this opportunity to urge the contractors, all power contractors, to come back to the site and so that they can uh, deliver. We are expecting to have about uh, 50 industries as time goes on uh, because of the power availability now. And I really have to commend uh, uh, President Mohammed Buhari for continuing the job that he inherited. This job started 20 years ago, but the government of Mohammed Buhari 
continue to fund it and make sure that it is done. We are in the final lap. Okay, so you can see now even the uh, substation is energized. It's called soaking of ransomware. It's called energization. So it means substation is ready for commissioning. We are doing the pre-testing or pre-commissioning. Work on the substation is nearing completion. From Gagarawa in Jigawa State, Joshua Ojito, NTA News. And on security, troops of Operation Hadar in Daji have rescued five kidnapped victims and arrested local gun fabricator in Sokoto State. A statement by the coordinator, Defense Media Operations, indicates that three of the liberated victims were rescued at Isa local government area. The other two were rescued at Yai village in Sabu Birini local government area of Sokoto State, while five members of the group and the local gun fabricator were also arrested with 10 dead guns at a village. Similarly, 302 rustled cows and 412 ship were recovered in Anka and Talata Marafa local government areas of Zamfara state. The statement adds that the air component of Operation Hadarin Daji has also destroyed another armed bandit camp in Kuyabana Forest, Zamfara state, neutralizing scores of bandit fighters. This was achieved through airstrikes executed on 10 July 2020 after human intelligence and reconnaissance missions established that some structures served as hideouts for suspected ISWAP elements. Meanwhile, the Nigeria Police Cybercrime Unit, Interpol National Central Bureau, Abuja, has arrested three suspects in Edo State for cybercrime related offences, including advance fee fraud, money laundering, and romance scam. In a statement, Force Public Relations DCP Frank Umba explained that the suspects were arrested in Urumi, Edo State, following investigations into suspected fraudulent online procurement and supply of COVID 19 protective masks received through the Interpol and CB Germany. In a similar development, police operatives also rescued an American citizen confined to a hotel in Lagos. The victim, a retired civil servant from Washington, D.C., USA, arrived in Nigeria on February 13, 2019. Investigations reveal that the suspect, Chukwebuka, also forcefully collected and took control of her credit and debit cards, as well as the operation of her bank accounts including the receipt of her monthly retirement benefits and allowances over the period of 15 months. The first public relations officer revealed that the suspects will be charged to court on conclusion of investigation and prosecuted in line with the Cyber Crime Prevention and Prohibition Act 2015. And away from security matters now, the National Gallery of Arts has rolled out post-COVID-19 programs aimed at promoting the Nigeria's arts industry. At a media briefing in Abuja, Acting Director General Simon Odi Iqbal Kuroni stated, this, stated that the plan is to reutilize the fine arts sector. Another program is titled The Three Irokos. This refers to the three biggest names in modern Nigerian uh, art scene. We have Ainona Bolu Benenwongo and a female artist, Clara Ubodaga Ungu. This, in fact, will be the first time three of them will be brought together in a single publication for people to read and appreciate what they did. The post-COVID-19 plans include building a befitting National Arts Gallery, which has been a major setback to the growth of the industry. Nigeria is one of the few countries in Africa and the world at large that does not have a befitting edifice as its National Gallery of Art. Other programs are unveiling the Oshogo Artists, meeting with the Society of Nigerian Artists and the Lagos Arts Exhibition. History was made in Lagos this Sunday when the federal government officially handed over the monumental edifice, the National Arts Theatre Complex, Igomu, Lagos, to the Bankers Committee under the supervision of the Central Bank of Nigeria for revitalization to meet international standards. Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, said the theatre will accelerate the growth of the creative industry and provide more than one million job opportunities. Abolade Salami brings us up to speed.
Let's now turn our attention now to COVID-19. Lagos and Eboni lead latest COVID-19 case standing as Nigeria records 571 new confirmed cases of COVID-19 with 16 deaths. The new cases puts the country's total figure at 32,558 as announced by the NCDC on Sunday. In the breakdown, Lagos recorded 152, while Ebony spikes up infection with 188 new cases. Edo State has 43 cases, Ondo recorded 46, the SAT recorded 38 cases, Oyo raked in 20 new cases, while Quara and Plateau has 19 and 17, respectively. Oshun, Bayelsa, Ikiti, and Katsina states recorded 14 cases each, while Akwaibom, Kaduna, and Rivers had 11 new cases each. Other cases are 10 in Niger State, 7 in Ogun, 6 in Kano, 4 in Cross River, and Bochi State recorded 2 cases. Lagos State remains the epicenter of the COVID-19 pandemic in Nigeria with a total number of 12,427 confirmed cases so far followed by the FCT with 2,576 cases. Edo has climbed to the third position with 1,731 cases. Out of the 32,558 confirmed cases, 13,447 patients have recovered and discharged, while the death toll is now 740. The outbreak of novel coronavirus is impacting global economies and many at the verge of going under. As the federal government gradually opens up the economy, deploying measures to tackle shocks that may arise after COVID-19 is pertinent. Achibong Basin, this report highlights some of these shocks and how people can cope in post-COVID-19. Today, face mask, shoes and constant hand washing have been the new normal. When I come out before 12 o'clock, I don't go. But now I stay reach 4 o'clock. All the hotels that used to patronize us, they don't come again because they got shut down. So the whole market has just gone like that. The United Nations estimates that nearly 30 million people could fall into poverty and the number of acute food insecure people could increase significantly. With this projection, Experts see evolving strategies to absorb economic shocks in post-COVID-19 have become imperative. Government agencies have come up with incentives, funding incentives, to ensure that uh, the agricultural chain yields the desired results. Findings reveal that the pandemic provides a platform for entrepreneurs to discover the best approach to viable opportunities. For the citizenry, managing shocks in the economy as the lives of the people grapple with the present global realities may be received with ease. In Calabar, Achibombasi, NTA News. <laughs> best and most efficient way to avoid getting infected is through regular hygienic and sanitary practices as well as social distancing. As individuals, we remain the greatest weapon to fight this pandemic. By washing our hands regularly with clean water and soap, disinfecting frequently used surfaces and areas, coughing into a tissue or elbow and strictly adhering to infection prevention control measures in health facilities, we can contain this virus. Coronavirus is real. Steps to avoid this pandemic. 
Wash your hands regularly or sanitize your hands. Keep social and physical distancing. Avoid crowded places. Stay at home unless absolutely necessary. Don't touch your eyes, nose or mouth if your hands are not clean. Avoid the spread of coronavirus. Coronavirus is real. If you just joined us, you're watching Panorama live on the network service of the NTA. Now taking a look at some political stories, the All Progressives Congress has assured Nigerians that the administration of President Muhammadu Buhari will not condone any form of corrupt practices, even as the administration is committed to fighting corruption as promised. The APC, in a statement by its Deputy National Publicity Secretary, Yakini Nabena, said the opposition PDP does not have what it takes to lament about its alleged corrupt practices in the present administration of the APC. In APC's government, nobody's above the law for the fact that the suspended acting chairman of the EFCC, Brahim Mago, is being investigated should send a signal to all those who think and have blackmailed the government's anti-corruption battle. The statement adds that the APC has acknowledged a statement by the presidency that there is no hiding place for any corrupt government official in his administration being led by an incorruptible personality. President Muhammadu Buhari and urged Nigerians to ignore what he described as fake lamentations by the PDP. Now, the South East APC leaders have resolved to work towards ensuring the unity of the party in order to actualize its goals. They made this known to journalists after a closed door meeting held at the Imo State Government House, Oweri. Bright Ebuchu has details. East APC meeting, which attracted major stakeholders from the region, held behind closed doors. Governor Zodima, while briefing journalists on the outcome of the meeting, which lasted several hours, states that President Muhammad Buhari has since 2015 exhibited capacity for good governance and development of the country. He further affirms that in view of the president's effort towards ensuring the unity of the APC, the Southeast leaders have resolved to align with his vision in the overall interest of the party. Ndibu, we are decided that we will follow the National Party. We, had, we have decided that all federal government policies that is targeted at making sure that the common man on the street has a good life, we will embrace. Former Senate President Ken Namani and Minister of Labor and Productivity Chris Ngige speak further on the outcome of the meeting. As somebody whose name is Hope is giving people hope, is giving the party hope in the Southeast. Is giving the party hope in the country. We have seen signs of that hope. And it gives us strength. And we believe that it's going to do a lot more. We have come to complain with our governor and we'll put up a minds with him so that we can do more. The target of the forum is to galvanize support for the party towards strengthening its structures. In Oere, Bright Ebuchu, NTA News. And on agriculture, farmers' groups have expressed confidence that ongoing military operations aimed at curbing activities of bandits in the northwest and north-central parts of the country. This is coming as the House Committee on Agriculture describes activities of bandits as capable of destabilizing the nation's agricultural development. Musali reports that Chairman House Committee on Agriculture said this at the distribution of imports to farmers in Abuja. Few of the about 20,000 poor and vulnerable benefits. Farmers in the northwest and the north central Nigeria are ranked the major producers of grains in the country. For instance, farmers in the regions have successfully pushed the country's maize production from 8 million tons in 2015 to more than 18 million tons in 2019. The insecurity in the northwest and central, occasioned by banditry, farmers say is constituting a threat to the farming activities. This uh, issue of insecurity affected many, many farmers. 
uh, because there are some areas, most of the farmers, they didn't, they didn't even go to the farm. We are coming with a steeper law that will ensure that anybody found guilty in terms of this banditry and criminality will be given a life sentence or a death sentence because that is the only way we can move this country forward. The ongoing military operations have rekindled the hope of farmers as they commence activities for the 2020 farming season. This therefore necessitated the distribution of farming inputs to miss farmers in the FCT. So there is need for us to create synergy for the two sides to meet where we have the producer and the optaker. I know the CBN is trying to do that, but the, in a larger perspective, the ministry is playing that role. The imputes were procured through the Anchor Brewers program with a view to assisting smallholder farmers boost agricultural production. In Abuja, Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. We head to United State now where about 20,000 poor and vulnerable in the state have received their May and June payment of the federal government's conditional cash transfer program totaling 480 million naira. The program, which is the present administration's social investment initiative, seeks to support the livelihood of the poor and vulnerable. Husseina Musa reports. There are about 20,000 poor and vulnerable benefiting from the monthly conditional cash transfer of the federal government. To them, the 10,000 Naira May and June payment came at a better time when their families and micro-businesses need financing. As I go now, now I share into three. One enter my business, one is for food, one for maintenance of the house. That is helping me in many ways. My children's school fees, our, my business, Many things, I can't count it all. There are about 20,000 beneficiaries caught across the 25 local government areas of Niger State. Head of Unit Conditional Cash Transfer, Niger State, Hadiza Shuru says 480 million naira was disbursed to the beneficiaries who have also been trained to cultivate saving culture so as to fall back on the money after their three years' exit. This, she adds, explains why cooperative societies collect individuals' contributions at payment centers. Uh, apart from the behavioral change, we have also taught, taught them how to do micro-businesses within their domains. The ex-officer of the program, Adam Shehu, says the beneficiaries who must be personally present, in addition to their pictures taken to avoid impersonation, are paid using their cards. The federal government says plans are underway for more people to benefit. Emena Hussain Musa, NTA News. Let's now have a feel of sports as Amanzi Marcos brings us up to date.